Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Christian from Berlin. Um, I worked all my life as a professional pianist, I worked the darkest blues places but also the most expensive luxury hotels. I want to share some of my experience and maybe give you some helpful tips to find gigs yourself. Please also watch my video 15 songs a bar pianist should know, it's linked in the description box. If you have further questions beyond the ones I try to answer here, please don't hesitate, use the comments uh, and I will try to answer every single one of them. Now let's go get gigs. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, helps my channel to grow and this video to be seen by others. Getting gigs is the hardest job of our job because we got to stick our heads out there. The point is, if you don't stick out your head, you will never know and you will at any rate not get any gigs. So we must, yes, we are doomed. Now the first bread and butter tip from me, you might, you know, laugh at me and say like, well, that's a pro tip, but in the end, it, it, it got me the most gigs. That is the scientifically proven, have a look inside tip. If I go by a restaurant and I have a quick glance through the windows, if there's a piano there, yes, that's what you do. And if you find, if you pass by a sign saying like live music inside, have a look inside if there's a piano. And what you do then is you either remember the place to come later or you go in straight. And you don't ask immediately like, oh, piano, I'm rock and roll master. Hey, here I come. You make friends with the barkeeper. You have a drink first. And then you might ask like a couple of minutes later after, I, after, you, after you complimented the barkeeper for his great shoes or whatever. You say, Oh, is that a piano? By chance, I'm a professional. And of course, you have made one of those little cards that you can get from any train station, printed, whatever, you know? Because taking down the number on a beer tab, they won't pass it on. If you leave a card, uh, then it's much better. But of course, you also sit down and say like, can I play a little bit? If it's busy already, then you make sure that, um, you know, but if a lot of restaurants um, uh, and bars have the tables far too close to the piano. When there's a grand piano, you make sure that you have the, uh, the soft pedal, the damper pedal pressed down at all times because when the tables, the first tables, they complain or they get up from their uh, whatever, uh, chicken McNuggets uh, and they like, if people have auditions, they are, uh, get this one chance, they're too nervous, they play too loud, they play too fast, and they play cluttery. People, uh, places who have regular live music, they very often advertise it in order not to waste too much money. So you go through the listings in or uh, advertisements um, and look for every Thursday evening live music because very often they have pianos there so and you write them down them down I know it's a hassle but that's the black bread and butter work so and then you go you visit those places too if there is a piano player already in one of the spots you're visiting you do not talk to the piano player because you know, I, uh, I worked so many years in hotels and uh, piano players made the mistake. They come to me, cause they, I, can, I could tell they're looking for a job. They look scruffy um, and um, whatever. They, so they come to the piano and they say like, oh, so they do regular piano music here. How much do they pay? And uh, of course I can smell, smell it against the wind. They want my job. And it's a very stupid idea to ask the piano player and get info from the piano player. Next step, you want a job in a fancy restaurant or in a fancy five-star hotel or in a shopping mall or in a department store. Well, these kind of places, they work very often, they work with agencies. Some of them might do hotel pianists. Of course, you can also go straight into a hotel and ask which agency is providing the hotel with piano players. And the concierge will know, the bar manager, they will all know. 
But there are also um, many hotels that want to save money and they do not pay an agency to do the work for them, but they do it in-house. We come to that a little bit later, okay? So where you walk directly in and try to get an audition there. Um, okay, let's see, let's say you found an agency that is doing piano players for hotels and you phone them, what they will tell you many times, unfortunately, they will tell you, well, if they're looking for somebody, if not, hmm. So, bad luck. Um, so they might tell you, let us know where you play and we will have a listen. We'll come, uh, some of us will come by. Yeah. Because they know um, audio can be manipulated um, easily today. Don't send out CDs. Forget it. It's, it's no point sending out CDs, which you know worked a couple of years ago. Uh, the second best thing is if you send them a link. Everything is done today by links. Um, for example, a YouTube, a small YouTube video of you playing. So, because that you cannot manipulate that easily. How will you get that? Tip! You go, for example, during lunchtime, uh, because of the light conditions, uh, the, em the pianos in the hotel lobbies, they're not played, they're empty. You take a second person and uh, you go to the barkeeper and you ask the barkeeper, oh, I want the souvenir for, for my grandma in Panama, whatever. And uh, can my friend uh, record me just playing a couple of minutes? And if you give them, give him 10 bucks or whatever, he might open the piano, very often it's locked. Choose a hotel with big windows so that the lighting conditions are kind of okay. Then you have something nice in, already in a suit. You do this in a suit with a tie. And then you get a couple of minutes, that's fine. Um, as long as well, get 10 minutes or whatever and play your best bits and smile into the camera don't look like a depressed hedgehog uh, but you play like and if one hotel doesn't do it go to the next one who's responsible um, for um, the piano players in hotels if an agency is not doing it it's one person it's always <clears throat> one person it's the so-called f and b manager food and beverage manager in by far the most cases the f and b manager is responsible for entertainment in the hotel i would like to talk to the f and b manager um i am a piano player and i would like to apply and you might come back a couple of months later because times are a changing so if if one hotel declines you um this the, the the things might change because sometimes they uh, try to save money um and a little bit later they want to invest they have want to have a new image they want to try again with live music to you know um to get people from outside into the bar so different managers are trying different things all the time you don't play the boring stuff you play again something slightly uh, with a beat you know got me the jobs because they always told me the other one is so boring you play with a little beat people like that that's how I got jobs a quick word on cruise liners because sometimes that's of interest for some of you um, that's a committal undertaking uh, undertaking um, the agencies, or if they're doing in-house, it's very easy to find out. You just phone the um, the uh, cruise line, basically, and they will tell you. But um, once, if you play once on a cruise liner, that's fun. Um, but then they have you on the list, and they phone you again, and uh, and you cannot say no, uh, so you say yes again. And what happens is that you will be away from home um, always a couple of weeks. And what happens is that the, your home contacts will not try to phone you anymore. So you become a cruise liner piano player, if you like that. Um, pay is, it depends, like you might get $200 a day, um, but then you have spots in between where you don't earn money, so you can uh, get money, pack money aside and save. Um, but the uh, the contact at home, uh, they were not, after a while, they will not phone you anymore because they would think like, oh, Christian, 
Uh, is he gone or is he not? Well, I found somebody else. So make up your mind. Also, you, mu you must like it. Or you must maybe uh, like to share a cabin with another staff member. You don't always get single cabins. And um, you might know, uh, like the atmosphere, mostly like um, seniors and uh, you, might, you must like the surrounding, otherwise you get depressed there. Um, what else? A very strong recommendation from my side is uh, get a duo partner, a saxophone or a singer. It might happen, happened to me a number of times that they might ask you, um, well, just piano player, well, we want a little bit more action here. And uh, do you have a saxophonist or a singer? And then you want to say, yes, of course I do. So. Prepare 20 songs with a saxophon, uh, saxophonist or a singer. Uh, a saxophonist is, is easier because with a singer you necessarily always need amplification. Um, but both is fine. Prepare a repertoire so when they ask you, you can say, yes, I do. Maybe you even, even have a trio, but start with a, start with a duo. It comes in very handy. You don't have to practice every week. Just, you know, when the gig comes up, you repeat your 20 songs and then you're ready. And last not least, um, some of you might want to play on an airplane. Uh, uh, <laughs> that one you have to find out for yourself. I have no experience. <laughs> anyway, if I could help you in any way here with uh, some uh, practical tips, it would make me happy. If you enjoyed watching it, come back, subscribe. Bye-bye from Berlin.